There are hundreds of thousands of cookie cutters just like this one that are sold on Etsy every single year. They're a really high margin and really reliable type of business. But how do you design these types of cutters and how can you design them to be reliable to produce and also mass producible so that hundreds of thousands if not millions of more can be made reliably? In this video, we're gonna go through everything from the design of the features to how to optimize the design so you can mass produce these with 3D printing. So starting off with the basics, what makes a good cookie cutter? What makes this better than any other sort of option. Well, let's just talk about the basics. There is the fact that it needs to be able to cut cookie dough. You need a kid to be able to press down on top of this without breaking or damaging it. And then it needs to be cleanable and washable over time so that you can chuck it in a dishwasher or people can hand wash them and you can get all the dough out of it so it doesn't just sit there and fester. These are the kind of the baselines for a cookie cutter. But the bigger advantage of it is, is that you need to be able to create lots of them. Cookie cutters are a fantastic niche business because they're very easy to create and design and generate to where you can make hundreds of different types of SKUs, which just is not possible with traditional types of manufacturing. So a 3D printing cookie cutter store might have thousands of individual versions of cookie cutters, not to mention different sizes. So the design needs to be robust enough to accept all types of different shapes being put into this baseline architecture. Okay, simple enough. So let's go ahead and just look at this very simple square cookie cutter. This will let us look at just the core features that are important in order to make this strong and reliable. Let's start off with the base. Number one, you want the handle to be quite wide. This is great because you give a, a large surface area for the person to press down on and also gives you a large surface area to adhere to the print bed. If you have a really thin base, then it might not stick down to the print bed very well and you can end up with warping or defects that can increase the cost of the part. When designing that base, of course, you wanna have a chamfer on the outside and a fillet or chamfer on the inside so that it is reliable and you don't have to worry about elephant footing or any other sorts of issues causing problems with the cutter. There is a question that comes up with complex cookie cutters that might have a stamp and the cutter integrated into one about whether the back should be fully solid or just have these little bars holding up the features. So you have a horizontal bar holding up his eyes and a vertical bar holding up his face. In this case, generally, I actually recommend going solid because again, it's really reliable. The first layer of a 3D print should always be as simple as possible. So what you wanna do is not necessarily have these bars that have corners and features that can warp or cause issues. You want one solid back. Now, the reason you might avoid this is because it can be difficult to clean. If dough gets stuck all the way up in there inside of his nostril and it's solid backed, you can't get it out. But you still have that issue with the bars because the bar is supporting a bunch of tiny features. So just making it fully solid on the background and then maybe separating the stamp and the outline is a better way of getting it done so that you have an outline cutter that is just walls and a nice solid thick base and then a stamp that is able to just press into the cookie. And that sort of layout looks something like this where you have just the outline and then the stamp itself. Okay, so that is the foundation of the cookie cutter. You reliably have it adhered to the print bed. It is cleanable. It is strong and reliable so that people can press down on it hard when they're cutting through some real thick dough. But now we actually need to look at the blade itself. The blade itself is simple, but also somewhat complex because there is some elegance to it. Number one, you want the blade to be about one millimeter thick. This gives it a really robust bit of strength so that if you have small features in there, again, like eyeballs and that kind of thing, that they can't snap off or break while people are working with their cookies. Nobody wants a one-eyed pig wandering around when they make a whole bunch of these cutters or having to have an icing job afterwards after they use the stamp. So make the blade one millimeter thick and that way you have at least two lines of filament going through them so that it's strong and reliable. Then at the very top, you want to actually apply a blade and you want the blade to be angled in from the outside, just like this. What this does for you is to make sure that any dough, extra dough from the thickness of the blade is pushed outward rather than inward. If you had the blade on the inside angled up this direction, then it would compress dough in and that can change your cutter and also makes the cookie difficult to remove from the cutter itself if you're pressing it in because you have compression inside of here. So just make sure the blade is angled from the outside. The blade is not perfectly sharp. You can take it down to sharp, but make sure that the very top edge of it is just 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters wide. This is still plenty sharp enough to cut through the cookie, but uh, make sure that you are able to put a single bead of filament down. If you take the tip of the blade down to a perfect point, you can end up with artifacts from printing to where if the slicer settings aren't just right, you can end up with pock marking along there because the slicer will reduce the flow of the nozzle and then that will leave an extra thin layer that is not the width of the nozzle. So you can have plastic debris break off the tip of the blade, which again, you want to avoid. 
So basically just blunt the top of the blade a little bit to about 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters so that it is the width of a typical nozzle. And now you have a cookie cutter that is robust, reliable, and will hold all of its parts. The last thing to do is if you have control of it, which you might not always, and we'll talk about that in a moment, you want to round all of the corners. Because if you have a single sharp corner, that is a place where dough can collect and build up over time, which might make the cookie cutters disposable or unusable after a certain period of time. So make sure to round the the inner edges and the outer edges so that anything that is inside of there can be removed and easily washed and cleaned. You want to avoid crevices. Now, sometimes when this is not possible is when you use a cookie cutter generator. There are softwares out there like CookieCat where you can upload a photo of a pig and then it will create a cookie cutter of that pig. They're really great tools for creating a large number of cookie cutters, but you can lose optimization. One thing you can do is to have the image kind of cleaned up and fixed by extra softwares. You can take the photo that you want to use and send it to like our custom GPT where you can upload the image and then it will create a cookie cutter compatible drawing that you can feed into cookie CAD and that will clean up all of the rough edges. So there are ways to do it to where you don't have all the crevices involved. Now the question comes up of what material do you make the cookie cutter out of? Quite frankly, PLA is fine. PLA is a biocompatible material. It is reliable, it is cheap, and it is durable to pour making cookie cutters. It also prints cleanly enough to where these cookie cutters can easily be cleaned up. But it does have a restriction. If you make a cookie cutter from PLA, it cannot be washed in a dishwasher because the heat of the water is enough to cause these to warp pretty readily. So if you want to avoid that, you can tell your customers to just say, hand wash them with cold water, and that's totally fine because soapy water is a perfectly good way of cleaning these types of cookie cutters. Or you can print your cookie cutters out of PET G and that allows them to be used in the dishwasher and still be cleaned really reliably. As far as cleaning and sanitizing cookie cutters, cold water with some soap is just fine. That is able to knock out all of the dough and knock out anything that would possibly be growing around. If you've ever had a wood cutting board in your life, you know that this is totally fine. So washing cookie cutters is perfectly okay and producing them is an easy thing to do for anybody who has a 3D printer or if you want to have these mass produced for your own project. So to sum it all up, if you're designing a cookie cutter and you set up something in your CAD software where you're creating from scratch, make sure you have a nice wide base that is about a centimeter all the way around. Make sure you're using a one millimeter thick blade that has a sharp top that is blunted down to the width of the nozzle, which is generally 0.4, and then make sure to round out all of the edges. Ultimately, what this comes down to is just doing the normal design rules for 3D printed parts. Round it out, have a large contact surface, and make sure it's reliable. Then you can make really great cookie cutters for anyone in your life, or create an entirely new business or piece of merchandise for your business that can be mass produced really reliably, but has tons of customization capability so that you can make whatever people happen to be looking for. So hopefully that's useful to you. Cookie cutters are an excellent product. We have produced tens to hundreds of thousands of these over the years for different customers and clients. And if you want to, you can check out how to do it yourself over at slantpod.com. But until then, enjoy designing your cookies and enjoy the Christmas season. Have a great day, everybody.